Hey everyone and welcome back to The Breakdown. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a Minecraft Bedrock dedicated server in 2021. This is a server that will allow you to basically have full and complete control over your server experience on Bedrock. And that's going to be Bedrock being... And Minecraft Bedrock is Minecraft Windows Edition, that's what we're going to be using here, but also a Minecraft iOS on your phone, and Minecraft on Android, and even on things like Switch and stuff like that can join these dedicated servers. So we're going to be going over how to start one in this video. From start to finish, it's all going to be covered. Now this is a server that's only meant for your friends and family, people that you trust, and the reason for that is that this will be hosted on your public IP address, and anyone who gets that IP address can do things like DDoS you, which means take your internet offline, as well well as be able to find out where you live down to latitude and longitude coordinates. You actually see that later in this video. So keep that in mind before you get into this. It's only for your friends and your family. You will also need a Windows computer that can run while you're playing Bedrock to be able to start this server. However, if you don't have either of those things or you want to make a public server, meaning you want anyone to be able to join even if they aren't your friends and family, or you want to be able to host a server and you don't have a Windows computer, luckily there is a solution, and that solution is Apex Minecraft Hosting. Go to the first link down below the breakdown to XYZ slash Apex to start your very own Bedrock server quickly and easily in just a few minutes with Apex Minecraft Hosting. We host our own server there. They are absolutely incredible, and they are a truly great way to host a Bedrock server. So again, you can check it out at the first link in the description down below the breakdown to XYZ slash Apex and start your Bedrock dedicated server at Apex where you don't have to worry about having a Windows computer or you can host a public server. By the way, you can also host a private server there as well. So nevertheless, what if you do have a Windows computer and you are okay with hosting a private server? Well then in that case, let's go ahead and get on with the video. First things first, we need to download our server software. We can find this at the second link in the description down below. When you click that, it's going to take you here. This is the dedicated server download. We can see that it does say Bedrock Server right there. That's how you know that this is for a Bedrock Server. And we are going to be on Windows here today. So we're going to come under Windows Server Software for Windows. Click on the Agree to the ULA. So you're agreeing to this right here, which we do. And then go ahead and click the green Download button. That's then going to download this in the bottom left on Google Chrome. You may need to save it in the same your screen on Mozilla Firefox. So save it in the bottom left or keep it in the bottom left on Google Chrome if you need to or save it on Mozilla Firefox. In my case it just downloads though. We can then go ahead and minimize our browser and we need to get this file. It's going to be found most likely in your downloads folder. To find that click the little Windows icon. It's in the top left of my screen probably in the bottom left of your screen. Click on that little Windows icon in the top or bottom left of your screen. Type in downloads file folder here and then here you will be able to find Bedrock server that we just downloaded. Drag this to your desktop just for ease of use. Now we want to go ahead and right click on this file we downloaded. And by the way, for some of you, this may be a WinRAR file or something like that. And if it is, that's okay. We still just want to extract it. To do that, you want to go ahead and right click on the file, click on Extract All, and then click on Extract. It's then going to extract the file right like so, basically pulling everything that's in that zip file out and putting it in a folder. Let's let that finish. There we go. That has now finished extracting. So we have a folder here. We also have the zip file we downloaded. We can delete the zip file. We don't need that anymore. We just need the folder. Let's go ahead and open up that folder. And in this folder, when you open it up, you'll have all of these files. Yes, there is a lot of them, but don't get too overwhelmed. All you need to do to start this server is double click on the bedrock underscore server dot exe. When you double click on that, the server is going to start up. It's that simple and that easy. Now, you may have this happen. I find it hilarious that this happens. And the reason is, is because most, not a lot of people host these servers, but I promise it's 100% safe. Microsoft is just very weird and they are technically blocking an app from one of their own companies when they do this. But I do promise it is all 100% safe. This right back here is on Minecraft.net. You can check the domain for yourself when you are on the website. But nonetheless, what we want to do is click more info and then click run anyway. Is it going to open up this? You're going to get this pop up. This is basically saying, hey, do you want to allow people to connect to this? You do because this is a server. So you want to make sure that this is available in both private and public. Make sure both of these are checked and then click allow access. At that point, it will then go ahead and get the server started. At this point, the server is up, but you can't join it, and we need to make it joinable. Now, for some reason, you can't join a Bedrock Edition server without port forwarding. I'm trying a few different things. It's potentially just my internet connection, but when I port forward, I can join this server no matter what without any problems. However, without port forwarding, that is not the case, and uh, it seems to be the case online. I've been kind of Googling it. kind of seems to be that way, but I haven't been able to figure out a way around it either, so we will need to port forward in order to get this server running. This is a where I want to mention to you at Apex 
text the first link down below. No port forwarding is required to start your server. So we do have all the links for port forwarding in the description down below, but first we need to log into our router and this process of that starts by clicking the little windows icon on the top left of my screen, probably the bottom left of your screen. You want to type in CMD. You'll have the command prompt app here. Open that up. You may have to like go through some user permissions to open it or something like that. If you do, that's perfectly fine. And then once you're in here, you want to type in IPCONFIG, IP config, exactly like that, and hit enter. You're then going to get a lot of numbers in here, but there's two specific numbers that we want. We want the IPv4 address and default gateway. So I'm going to go ahead, open up notepad, and I'm going to go ahead and type the IP v4 and for my case that's going to be 192.168.1.67 for you it could be something completely different and that's why we're doing it this way because your numbers are most likely going to be different from mine our default gateway is going to be in my case 192.168.1.1 again it's probably be completely different and that's a okay once you've got that kind of typed in, whether you want to write it down or type it in notepad, whatever, like I did, whatever you did, doesn't matter. As long as once you've got those numbers written down, we can close out a command prompt. We'll also go ahead and stop our server. You can do this by typing STOP here, stop right on this like blank line and hitting enter. And then it's going to go ahead and stop the server and close out of it. In theory, you shouldn't, in theory, you may not have had to stop the server, but it also frees up computer's resources because you don't need the server open. That is for sure. So once you've got that, we can go ahead and get this rocking. The first thing we want to do is go to our web browser and open up a brand new tab. In this new tab, we want to go ahead and type in our default gateway. So in my case, that's 192.168.1.1. So we're going to type in 192.168.1.1. When you type that in, you're going to get some sort of a login box. Now for me, mine pops in from the top. Yours may be in a fancy, more GUI interface over here on the right hand side. Doesn't matter. There will be some sort of a login box pop up. In this login box, you want to enter in your router's username and password, which you can find in the description down below. This goes over every single step of getting your router's username and password. Basically go through each and every method until you find the one that works for you. By number five, everyone has found their password, but usually by number three, people have found their router username and password. So let's go ahead. I'm going to come back here, log into mine, and I will meet you once I have. So there we have it. We have now entered our username and password. Let's go ahead and sign in. And when we do sign in, you might get an ad like this. I did, but your router will most likely look completely different from what you see right here. And that's okay because we have an in-depth guide on how to port forward on any router. It goes through every single router out there, including this Netgear system here. But whether you have a Netgear system, a Linksys system, or any other router system out there, most of them are the same. So even if your router isn't specifically mentioned in this video, still go through it because it is probably in there in some form. It'll familiarize you with the terms that you'll see. It'll familiarize you with everything else with routers. And then when you get into yours, you'll probably be like, oh, this is like this one. This is like this one. Netgear routers are very similar, for example, to TP-Link routers that are out there, and Linksys routers are similar to other routers. A lot of Cisco routers are very similar to other routers as well, and Verizon, AT&T routers, those are both very similar too. So all that's covered in this video, and even if it isn't specifically mentioned, still watch this content. But nevertheless, once we're here, we want to go ahead and port forward. For me, it's going to be in advanced, and then it's going to be in advanced again, and then it's going to be in port forwarding slash port triggering. For you, it may be in advanced, it may be in advanced advanced, it may be in advanced administration, it may be the administration tab for you instead of the advanced tab. But for me, it is in advanced and then advanced again. And then it's port forwarding slash port triggering. It may be in apps and gaming or gaming and apps. That's something that's very, very common. So port forwarding slash port triggering is what you're looking for. For me, it is in port forwarding slash port triggering. For you, it may be apps and gaming. For you, it may just be called port forwarding or single port forwarding. Both of those are acceptable as well as, like I said, apps and gaming is popular. But our video will go through everything more in depth. And that's why watching that dedicated how to port forward video is important. Once you click on port forwarding slash port triggering though, you'll probably get something that looks similar to this. You may have a big long box of drop down boxes and if that's the case, go ahead and just work on the first one. However, you may need to hit add or create a service or something like that. And that's what we're going to do. Add custom service here. When you click on that, it's going to go ahead and load up the basically port forwarding screen on a Netgear router like this. However, if you have an other router, it might do it completely different. But once you're here, what we need to do is look for service name or ID. And that's going to be in, my, in no matter what Minecraft. Then we want to look for protocol. That's going to be TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP or both. All three of those options are correct. And if you can't for whatever reason, do both. Do one port forward as TCP, then do all this again under the UDP profile to have them both done. But we do have the selection for TCP slash UDP. Now for external port range, port one, port two, first port, second port, anything to do with the word port, P-O-R-T, anything to do with the word port, you're going to enter in 
for a Minecraft Bedrock server, 19132. So on a Bedrock server, it is 1932. And 19132, right like that, that's what the port is going to be for anything involving the word port on a Bedrock server. Note, that is different from Java Edition, so make sure if you're used to making Java servers, that might be where one of your issues was. Now for me, I automatically can have used the same port range for internal port, but if you do have a second port, internal port, port 2, whatever it's called, that one's also going to be a 19132. So 19132 for both ports, anything involving the word port, 19132. Now for your internal IP address, this is going to be that IPv4 address we got earlier. Now, as you can see here, I can enter in my internal IP address, 192.168.1.67, but for some of you, you will just have this big drop-down box of things that basically are on your internet network. And what we want to do is find the device. And right there it is for me, 192.168.1.67. So you can also select it there. Both ways work. Then go ahead and click apply, save, create, whatever your option is. And then you should have something that looks like this. Confirm that your ports are 19132 and that your internal IP address is the same as your IPv4 address. After you've done that, we can go ahead and start your server. Let's go ahead, start her right on up. Now, when you go to join, what you're going to want to do is use your public IP address. So these IP address here, they can go away. We now need to go get your public IP address after you've double clicked on bedrock underscore server dot ex. To do this, we want to go to our website, of course, in the description down below, we have a link to what's my IP address. Now on our screen, you can see this is blacked out except for the 255. That's because you don't want to give this out to anyone and everyone. And you can see the information that can be gotten with your IP address, your region, your city, your latitude and longitude coordinates can all be grabbed from your public IP address. So it is very, very important that you don't give this out to anybody and everybody. And that's where Apex comes in. On Apex, you can make a private server or you can make a public server. It doesn't matter. So if you want to give your IP address to everyone, you can on Apex. And let's go ahead though and copy our public IP address. Then we can go ahead and minimize our browser. And then we want to go ahead and finally open up Minecraft. So let me go ahead, get Minecraft open and we'll be able to join on in. So here we are, Minecraft is open and Bedrock Edition server is running. To add a server, we want to go to play, and then we want to go to servers. By the way, you and your friends are going to join the exact same way. You're going to go to servers, and it doesn't matter what platform they're on, they're going to go to servers after they click play, right? From the main menu, they're going to hit play, they're going to go to servers, scroll all the way down to the bottom on the left-hand side, and then click add server. Then they can name it whatever you want. I'm just going to name it local server. It doesn't matter what you name it. Then you want to go ahead and paste in your public IP address. Now, as you can see here, the last three digits, those are all still the same as they are earlier just you know we're not playing any trickery on you or anything like that we then go ahead and click save you can't click play by the way but if you click save it's going to be over here on the left hand side now we can go ahead and click on the server don't be alarmed if it doesn't find the server like this then just click join server and it will join right on in. you can see on the left hand side daily videos that's me that's my gamer tag and here we are in game on our server just to prove it we'll break a few blocks right like so and then we'll place a few blocks down so we'll come up here, place these down in a, a very kind of weird manner, right like so. And then we'll go ahead and grab this dirt block and place it on the side. Once we've done that, we can then go ahead and leave the server. So I'm going to go ahead, save and quit. And we're going to rejoin it via that server menu here. So again, to get here, just going to go to play and then click on servers, scroll down to the left-hand side, click on local server, and then click join server. So I'm going to join right on in the server and you will see our weird sort of building that we made. There it is. So there you have it. If you have any questions about a Bedrock server, let us know in the comment section down below. And if you do want to set up a Bedrock server in the easiest way possible, be sure to check out Apex at the first link down below, the breakdown of XYZ slash Apex. Thank you so, so much for watching. Again, if you enjoyed the video, give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more awesome content on Minecraft and Minecraft Bedrock Edition every single day of the week. My name is Nick and I am out. Peace.